Sunday morning broadcast of the Mother Zion Hour, emanating from the main sanctuary of the Mother African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Church of Black Liberation here in the village of Harlem, New York. We are excited, we are thrilled, we are honored that you have so opted to cast your Sunday morning lights with us on this Sunday morning. So come now and join us as we praise God as all people of God.
The songs of our people are not falling from us. The Negro spirituals of our people that brought us through the dreadful stench of institutionalized slavery here in these yet to be United States. Those songs have been a balm gilead for us as we search on upon these shores. And now our dear sister Andrea will lead us in one of those great Negro spirituals and songs of our people.
And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you
Dear friends, join me in a word of sermonic prayer. Most wise and eternal God, we are grateful that thy word is a lamp to our feet and indeed a light to our path. We ask, O oh God, that you bless now these words. May they not be simply regarded as words from me. As a matter of fact, O oh God, remove me from the equation altogether. May thy people receive and hear thy word on this day. And may the seeds of your word fall upon the good soil of our hearts. So come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I share again just one verse from the lesson from Holy Writ that was read in your hearing earlier in the service. From the book of Revelation, the 15th chapter. And just a portion of the second verse. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the heart of God. I'd like to preach this beautiful, albeit hot Sunday morning, from this thought. Victory in the midst of chaos. Victory in the midst of chaos. One of the most widely read preachers of the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s was a minister by the name of William Sloan Coffin. Reverend Coffin was for some years the senior minister of the Riverside Church here in New York City. He served for some years before that as the university chaplain at Yale University in Battelle Chapel. Some time ago in the early 2000s, I had the pleasure of hearing the Reverend William Sloan Coffin preach. And my, how he moved and dazzled me with his brilliant sermonic sentence structure. I was so impressed by the way in which Dr. Coffin said it. One thing he said in that sermon that I shall never forget was when he uttered the words, life isn't about what you can get from it, but life is really all about what you can become by it. In other words, life is really not about what you can get, but it's really all about who you can become. We are transitory beings. We are always in process of becoming something. Dr. Gardetel was preaching a sermon one time telling a story about someone who was experiencing this awful purging and scourging in life. You know what happens when life gets the best of you, when life has you up against the ropes, and you say things you really don't mean, but the inside turmoil that you feel makes you want to say certain things. And someone has it, is experiencing something great and traumatic, and they jumped up and said, if I knew this was going to happen to me, I wish I never would have been made. Someone nearby them said, my dear, you're not made, at least not yet. What a great benefit it is for us to know that God is not through 
with us yet. That we are at this moment, on this Sunday morning, on this hot Sunday morning, we are still now sitting upon the potter's wheel. God is still making and forming and fashioning us in his image. Don't you know every breath you take that is a refashioning of ourselves into the very image of God? No, we're not made. We are being made. But if we were to be fully honest and transparent with ourselves, we have to tell the truth and acknowledge that these last four or five months have been grueling. They have been bitter months. Months of great desperation. When if you thought you had something, you discover you don't have as much as you thought you had. We are as a people running on E, yet we still have many miles to go before we sleep. We have been way down yonder by ourselves in that place where it's hard, if possible even, to hear anybody pray. We've lost friends, family members, jobs, security, you name it, We've lost it. And for those with jobs, what we were making before, we're not able to make it now. This is the first season in my life that I didn't know in the flesh of John Lewis. He's gone from us now. Or Reverend C.T. Vivian, who was always encouraging and supporting of my ministry as I went here and there. He was always very interested in how I was keeping up with agitating the gravel when it comes to fighting white supremacy. I remember talking to Reverend Vivian about being stationed here at Mother Zion, and he said, Bird, you are in tall cotton now. Yes, I am in tall cotton. But even in tall cotton, you might have to pick it on hot days. And even the weather is pointing us to the fact that we are in a hot place in our nation. Our greatest civil rights leaders are leaving us. John Lewis was jailed 45 times in his lifetime for what he would say keeping up and causing good trouble. Now I've been thinking throughout this week with all of our great leaders passing off the sea, what do we have now? the atmosphere to speak truth to power. What do we have now? Companies closing up. Businesses closing up. This time, they're not closing up, moving offshore. This time, they're closing up for good. Less jobs. Less leaders. No money. The demand continues to go up. Seems as if there's nothing in our hands now. Thankfully, in these ravishing revelations of John the Revelator, this book that many of us avoid because, you know, people regard the book of Revelation as that scary end time book. Too Armageddon for some people to even want to digest or even want to read.
But if you take some time to look at the book of Revelation, you can see a recipe for those of us who are striving, carrying burdens, trying to make heaven our home. Here in this 15th chapter of the book of Revelation, John looks, and you ought to always stick close to people who are good at looking. I'm not talking about the type of people who are good at looking and assessing simply to see what people have on and to check out what people are wearing. No, I'm not talking about that nosy, busybody look that, that one person in everybody's block always has. Noticing everything but not seeing nothing. No, I'm not talking about that type of look. But you ought to have some people in your life who are walking with you, who have the ability to see things in the spirit. Some things that happen in this life won't be evidenced directly face to face. There are some places in this life you will never go in the body, but you can go in the spirit. There are some things in this life, truthfully, you can't see with the naked eye. It is good to have some people around you who know something about a revelation, who know something about what eyes cannot see, who know something about what is possible if you engage your faith and choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Here, John the Revelator says, I see seven angels. John, what do these seven angels do? These seven angels are waging a battle against evil. These seven angels are holding evil and oppression not only at bay, but they are slaughtering them at every possible turn. These seven angels have intentionally picked a fight with evil, and these seven angels are winning. I want to say to you this morning as you're watching this broadcast on the Mother's Eye Hour, there are some battles you and I don't have to fight because God, who sits high and looks low, has sent out angels to fight on our behalf. We don't have to always jump in every fight that we see. Yes, the fight against oppression is a good fight to get in. The fight against racism is a good fight to get in. And there are a myriad of fights that you and I ought to always be involved in. But there are some battles that are best left up for God to fight. Did Yolanda Adams sing that song that we love to hear so much? The battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. But if the battle is the Lord's, we ought to let the Lord fight the battle. We ought to ask God to send Michael the Archangel to do some things in our community, to do some things in our households, to do some things in these yet to be United States of America. God has angels already to do it right now. God has angels right now ready to fight on your behalf. But that's not all John saw. John saw these angels fighting oppression and fighting evil. But there was also he looked and saw. He looked and he saw a sea of glass. And he said that sea was mingled with fire. <laughs> fire and water converging on the sea. He goes on further and he says, but on the sea, 
was standing a number. They that stand on the sea of glass. Yes. But they weren't just standing there empty handed. The Bible says that they were standing on the sea of glass with hearts of God in their hand. Well, I'm going to close, but I'll tell you this, dear friends. Life has taken a lot away from us over these last four or five months. We've lost so much, and I don't have to run down the list of things we've lost over this time. But let me tell you how I know that in the midst of all of this chaos, you and I can still have the victory. Because when John looked over on that sea of glass, and he saw that number standing there, their hands were not empty. There was something in their hands. What they have in their hands, Reverend, I'm so glad you asked. They didn't have uh, weapons of mass destruction in their hands because they realized that the angels were already fighting the battle. They had in their hands something called hearts of God. What in the world is a heart of God? That simply means while they were standing on this sea of glass, they had in their hands instruments of praise. Yeah, I said it. They had instruments of praise as they stood on this sea of glass. Friends, I don't know what you have this morning, but let me tell you what I have. In my hands right now are instruments of praise. I must give God some praise because God is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, I will give thanks and praise to God because God has been better to me than I have ever been to myself. Because God has made a way out of no way. Because God is good and beside God there is no other. I tell you how I know I'm going to have the victory because while all on around me, I'm still going to sing the praises of God. I may not have as much money as I used to have, but I'm still going to praise God. My body may not be doing right, but I'm still going to give praise to God. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm still going to give praise to God. Here's how you can have victory in the midst of chaos. Still have the ability to say hallelujah anyhow. If you're looking for me, not the bird will be standing on that sea of glass with hearts of God in my hand. I'm going to be singing now, thank we all our God. I'm going to sing, Jesus paid it all. You know why? For if we don't have anything else, we have a song. And if you want the victory right now, here is what I suggest. Start singing. Let us pray. Oh, wise and eternal God, thank you for blessing us with this privilege to share a word from on high. We ask now, God, that you would bless each and every hearer, that as they move and live and have their being, they will accept thy word into their hearts as your believing children. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Brother Hassan, can you keep praying that just a little bit? For those of you who are watching, I want you to hear me and hear me good. You couldn't get a better singer to sing those words than I've done, dear Sister O'Rourke. What did she just say? She just said, come out of hiding. You've been in your home hiding from God. Hiding. That's what we do, you know. We don't want people to know what's going on with us or what's going on in us. So we hide. You and I can never hide from God. That selection doesn't end there. Selection encourages us to keep on going. Don't quit now because we're almost home. Tell your spirit right now, don't quit now. You're almost home. So dear friends, as you have heard this gospel message preached about singing your song of praise, having the victory in the midst of chaos, it's now incumbent upon you to develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching this broadcast and you desire to become a Christian, you desire to be free from sin, all you have to do is pray these words. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And he'll come right on in and lead you and guide you and direct you in all that you do. If you're here, if you're watching, and you desire to unite with Mother A.M. Design Church, we want you to connect with us. Connect with us and let us plug you into the kingdom of God. Simply send us a direct message through Facebook, through a social media outlet. Let us know who you are and where you are and how we can continue to be in touch with you in this life journey. But I pray to you right now is, dear friend, come out of hiding. You don't have to hide from God. Come on out and give God your heart and your life. You deserve a new beginning. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. For every household, for every need, for every anxiety, for every individual depressed in spirit, for every person facing a medical appointment, for every person who has emerged from a medical appointment with some not so good news, we pray now, God, that you would have your way. May thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, God, a mind to serve you without knowing what the end is going to be. Give us the spirit to give you the very best we have, though we don't know if there will be any left for us. But God, we trust that as we use our energy to be a blessing to your kingdom, that you will restore us stronger than we've ever been before. So God, for that person now in their home, listening to this Mother Zion Hour broadcast, I pray now, God, that you would give them an unusual blessing, an unusual anointing. Give them that joy that the world can't give and that joy that the world can't take away. Give it to them, God. Give them peace in their heart. Joy in their soul. For some who've been couch potatoes in the spirit, I pray that you would put running in their feet and clapping in their hands. For Mother A and Design Church, we will continue to be the church you've called us to be. And God, if ever we err or stray, Bring us back in alignment with your will. 
For God, we serve thee and we serve not ourselves. So lead us, guide us, and direct us. And now for the names that are going up in every home. For that brother, for that sister, for that mother, that father, that spouse, that child. We pray, God, that you would now open up a window of heaven and pour out blessings to them that they not have room enough to contain. And, oh God, we pray that you will always give us the song to sing. And as we come out of hiding, we pray we'll be able to sing the Lord's song even in a strange land. And as we stand upon the sea of glass. Oh God, we want you to know that there will be hearts of praise perpetually in our hands. So God, whenever you come looking for us, you'll find us praising your name. For this we pray in the only name that matters, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us all say Amen. Amen. I'd like for us to sing one of those great, great hymns of the church. And I want to affectionately dedicate this hymn to our retired senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Right Reverend George Washington Carver Walker Sr., uh, who is a consummate churchman, an episcopate in every sense of the word, uh, who uh, I had a chance to talk to this past week thought about him and I thought about this hymn, this hymn that was written by Bishop William Jacob Walls of the AME Zion Church. As we sing it, I know many of you are not going to know it, and that's all right. This is not only a worship service, but this is a laboratory service. You can learn as you worship at the same time. Let us sing now this great hymn of the AME Zion Church, a hymn you won't hear anywhere else but in Zion, a hymn written by Bishop William Jacob Walls. To Judah's rugged, lofty land, let us all stand and sing to the glory of God one of our great connectional hymns. To Judah's rugged, lofty land, let us sing now to the glory of God.
falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen.